Good morning. Have your block nearby if you would like to use one. We're going to start this class in a seated position. So it's up to you and how you're feeling today, whether you'd like to have your dominant leg in front or if you want to switch it out. All I ask is that you find a seated position. I recommend Sukhasana for the next several poses. However, if you'd like to start your meditation in another posture, then find what's going to be best for you. First, let yourself arrive. Just take a quick inventory of your thought cycles and patterns, your physical body. And then let your eye gaze soften if it hasn't already. And if it's comfortable for you, allow your eyelids to close. And take a few moments again to scan your body from top all the way down to your toes. And then backwards, toes to top. As you're seated, are there any spots in your body where you're holding on to tension that might not be necessary for this specific posture that you are embodying? Whether it's a tight jaw, or holding tight onto your hips, maybe you can release that a bit. Maybe your arms and hands are clenched. And then notice if your breath becomes a little larger and softer. It might not, it might. And then attempt to find a quality through your inhales and through your exhales. Finding expansion on all sides, not just through your chest and not just through your belly. And I'd like to invite you to set a dedication or intention for this practice. The one that I suggest is strength and resilience through open heartedness and vulnerability. If that's something that resonates with you, then please adopt it or some version of it. Maybe you have a mantra of your own that you'd like to employ. And if that doesn't speak to you, then please find something else that gently pulls you. And when you're ready, when you have that thought, that concept, that person, whatever your dedication has to be in mind, bring your palms together and Anjali Mudra, your thumbs in towards your sternum, fingertips pointing up. And as you breathe, you can feel your chest press into your thumbs, making a connection through intention to your physical body as though your heart could reach through to your hands. We're going to take several breaths together as a community as we seal these for ourselves and for each other. Deep breath in, expand outward, feel your chest press into your thumbs, thumbs gently pressing into your chest, hold at the top. Notice that fullness and on an exhale, simply release it, let go. And again, very deep breath, hold in. And release. One more breath like this. And then take the next five breaths to reflect. You can keep your hands at your heart center or release them down to your thighs. First of five breaths with inside. At the end of your fifth exhale, allow your eyelids to blink open or refocus your gaze. We're going to start the more active part of our class. If you feel a little stiff, you could change out your legs or move into a Sukhasana pose if you chose another posture for the beginning of this class. We're going to start with some twists and start to make our movements larger. On an inhale, reach your arms out and up. Send your thumb, uh, your chin up toward the ceiling, towards your thumb. On an exhale, take your right hand to your left thigh, left fingertips behind you. Inhale, lift a little bit taller. Pull your floating ribs in and use your core as you exhale and twist further to the left. Chin moving beyond your left shoulder. Next inhale, take your chin back to center, arms lift, send your chin upward. Exhale, twist in the opposite direction. Fingertips as resistance. Engage your core, assisting the twist on your exhales. 
Inhale back to center once more on either side. We'll just take it to the end of the exhale as you twist. Breath in back to center. Large movements. See if you can sync up breath to movement best you can. Twist. Inhale, come back up to center. And then exhale, bring your thumbs back to the center of your chest. So I'm gonna do some neck and then side stretches as well. Reach your right arm up and over. So your fingertips are just above your ear. Drop your right ear towards your right shoulder. Right shoulder moving away. And you can either take your left fingertips out or take your left hand and place it kind of just above your pec, right below your shoulder. And then gently pull the skin as you're drawing your right ear towards your right shoulder. Release left hand down, release the right hand down, lift up your head, left hand comes up and over, right above your ear. First start by just dropping your ear toward the left, and then option to take a little bit further, right fingertips reaching out, or right hand above the right pack, below the right shoulder, that protrusion, and then gently draw toward the direction that your elbow is pointing. So you're pulling at a diagonal, just drawing your skin. Release the right hand, release the left, lift up. This time, reach your right arm up and over to the left, left hand out to the side to provide you with some stability. Press your right hip into the mat. You can either keep your right arm straight or just let it bend. Maybe even play a little bit and see what your shoulder feels like. Again, we're gonna be doing some open-hearted poses. So start to warm up, start to consider what your body feels like today. Might not be the same as previous days. On an exhale, lift back up, right hand comes down to the mat, left fingertips lift up and over, lean over to the right, press a little bit more into your left hip, and if your left shoulder is starting to draw forward, simply arc back, and if a straight arm prevents that, just bend your elbow. If you've got your uh, ribs floating out, you're starting to take more of a back bend, just pull them back in. We're just looking for a stretch to the left side of the body at this moment. And then take everything right back up. Roll over onto your hands and knees. We're gonna work through our wrists. So as we're opening up through our shoulders, there's this like chain of joints and muscles and they're all kind of connected. So shoulders, elbows, wrists, the whole way down. So hands and knees. So first just move everything in uh, organic movement. So shrug through your shoulders, move through your knees, ankles, wrists, fingertips. And then we're gonna to start to play with a little bit of wrist stretch. So as your hands are facing towards the front, you're gonna to start to walk them out to the sides. And eventually your fingertips are going to point towards your knees, wrists pointing away from you, thumbs out to the side. If you don't have this full mobility, don't worry about it. Go to where it feels okay for you. And then you're going to very gently start to send your hips back so you can get a stretch through the forearms. You might go far, you might not go very far. All right, shift it back. And then you're simply going to flip your hands. So the fingertips are still facing towards you, but the back of your hand is on the mat. Your palm is facing up. Flip to one side, flip to the other. Be gentle with yourself. First, stay out here just for a moment. So you've got a little bit of pressure to the backs of your hands. This might be plenty. And if you're looking for a little bit more, if this is accessible, only if it is, and this is just a sensation and is not a sensation of pain, again, start to shift your hips back. I tend not to move very far when I do this. All right, and then come out of that. So you're keeping the backs of your hands to the mat. Bend your elbows out, so not like chaturanga. You got bulldog elbows. Pull your fingertips and your thumb in. Try to make a fist here. You might have to bend down really far to get your fingertips in. I usually do. And then option to stay right here or start to straighten your elbows while maintaining those fists. But be nice to yourself. All right, and then re-bend into the elbows, full on bulldog, release fingertips and your thumb, flip to the palms of your hands like we had before. Simply spread your fingertips wide, just staying in this tabletop pose and give this pose some attention. So spread fingertips wide, press down, especially through the index finger mound and thumb mound, up your inner elbows forward. And then sit back onto your knees and just start to move your wrists in circles in one direction. And then abracadabra in the other direction. 
right arm out, point your fingertips up, take your left fingertips and simply draw your fingertips towards your right shoulder, pressing through the heel of your right hand. Let go of that and then pull your fingertips down so you're pressing up to the top of your right wrist. Let go of that, flap it around. Left arm out, pull your right fingertips towards your shoulder, press up to the heel of your left hand. Release that, pull the fingertips down, pressing to the top of wrist. Even here, you can wrap your inner elbow up. So keeping the shoulder away from here. And then let go, flap it around, flap it around. A little bit of abracadabra, both directions. And then come back down to your hands and your knees. We're going to thread the needle here. So getting a little bit more mobility and stretch through our shoulders. Wait to left palm, pull your right fingertips up, look up towards your right thumb, stay here for a full breath. Inhale and exhale, really reaching away. And then on an exhale, thread your right arm underneath you, come onto your right shoulder, back of hand is onto the mat. You can stay right here. Or if you wanna take it in a different direction, tiptoe your left fingertips out, come up onto finger pads and your elbow wraps up. You'll feel like your shoulder blade is like coming around your rib cage a bit. And then if you want to take it further, I find this to be fairly intense. Maybe you do as well. Perhaps it's different um, in your anatomy. Start to walk your left fingertips toward the right corner of your yoga mat. Continue to press through the mat. Breathe into any places of tension. And then you're going to, if you took that extension, walk your left fingertips back. Take your hand all the way back. Press through the left hand so you can come up. Inhale your right fingertips up toward the ceiling. Stay here again, full cycle of breath. And then release your right hand down to the mat. Immediately shift over to the right palm. Left fingertips come up, stay here. And then next exhale, thread the needle onto left shoulder. Take the same variation that you took on the side before. If it doesn't quite turn out the same, don't worry about it, but attempt equality. And then begin to rewind your path as you took it. If you took an extension, press to the right palm, left fingertips come up, open arm stretch, stay here. And then release your hands down to the mat. Make sure that your shins are parallel to, to each other. We're going to take a uh, cat cow flow with the child's pose. So send your hips back, modify child's pose, arms reach out way far in front of you. On an inhale, rise to your knees, palms lift up, maybe press them together, slide back, then press through your knees. Exhale, modify child's pose, bow all the way down. Inhale, keep your belly low, reach your heart forward, finding that open heartedness already coming into a cow pose, looking up. Exhale, press into your cat arch or spine, bring your chin towards your chest, shift your hips back to your heels, modify child's pose. Inhale, rise up, find expansion. Exhale, bow. Inhale, slide it forward for your cow pose. Exhale, press up through cat. One more time like that, shift your hips back. Inhale, rise up, slide back bend. Exhale, take it all the way down. Inhale, slither your heart forward for your cow. Exhale, press into cat. And then press back to the modified child, but tuck your toes. Come into downward facing dog as you're ready. Find some movement if you need. Spread your fingertips wide, low belly in, giving yourself lots of strength. Press your heels back toward the mat by reaching back through your inner thighs. And then bend both knees fairly generously. We're gonna take a downward facing dog uh, figure four stretch here. So it takes a little bit of flexibility. So if you're like, oh, this is hard, that's okay. It is hard. You're gonna take your right ankle, placing it across your left thigh. Keeping the bend to your left knee, press your hips back. Just breathe through it. All right, then come out of that a bit. Place your right foot in the same plane as the left. Bend both knees again. Left ankle over right thigh. Press your hips back. Figure four, downward facing dog. And then place your foot next to the other. Inhale, rise to your toes, come to the top of a plank pose. Check out your dimensions and alignment. Just breathe here. 
And then on the next exhale, chin to chest, rock it up and back to downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg comes up toward the ceiling. Create lots of space. Lift up on your left toes. On an exhale, bring your knee to your nose. Place your foot between your hands towards your right thumb. Drop your left knee down. We'll take an Andre and Asana pose. Arms lift up or always an option to have your hands to your thigh. Shoulder blades down and back. Wrap your pinkies toward each other. And consider dripping your hips down toward the mat. If that's not feeling great, then stay straight up. On your next exhale, take your hands down to the mat. Quad stretch here. So pull your left knee up. Cycle your right arm up and back. For this class, I do recommend making a connection um, because we're going to be working toward dancer pose. That said, if you know that you prefer to work on strength instead for your own personal reasons, then please do that. Send your hips back. Maybe you can make a connection, heel to hip, and then re-bend. Option to take a little bit of a twist here too, pressing through your left hand, starting to stack right shoulder over left. Just breathe. And also if you feel like you need a little bit more, you can always come onto your left forearm. Okay, release that foot. Take your hand down to the mat. Tuck your back toes, lift up your back knee. Step your right foot back to meet your left. You're in a high plank. On an exhale, lower all the way down to your mat. Do your chaturanga knees up or down. Untuck your toes, backwards breath cobra. Take your hands out to the sides, onto finger pads. Uh, forehead is down, elbows are up. Inhale, prepare, low belly in. Exhale, press the tops of feet and fingertips. Start to roll up, your head is heavy. Inhale, unravel, unfurl. Exhale, wave it all the way back down. Take your hands closer in towards your body. You're going to make your way back to downward facing dog. You can either come through hands and knees or if you'd like, tuck your toes, lift up through chaturanga to your plank and then press up and back. When you're ready, inhale, left leg comes up and back. Lift up through your right toes on an exhale. Pull your knee to your nose. Place your foot between your hands. Knee stacked over ankle and then drop your right knee down as you're ready. Andre and Asana pose. Back toes tucked or untucked. This is your choice. And then on an exhale, take your hands down to the mat. We're going to take that quad stretch again. Shift the weight to your right hand. Pull your right heel towards you. Reach your left arm up and back. Grasp your foot or maybe use a strap to help you. Send your hips back. Heel to bone connection if that's working for you. And then rebend. Option to open up. Finding some open heart in this here, beginning to stack a left shoulder over right. And always an option to drop to your right forearm if you like. Use the strength of your arm to pull your heel in closer. And then release the foot, place your left hand down. So you're framing your front foot, tuck your back toes, lift up your back knee, step your left foot back, high plank. On an exhale, lower all the way down to your mat. Once again, keep your shoulders lifted, untuck your toes, take your hands out wide. We're gonna take a backwards breath, cobra once again, forehead down, toes untucked. Inhale, prepare, press, your low, uh, your low belly draws in rather, plus at your feet. Exhale, press your hands, roll up. Inhale, unravel, face up. Exhale, wave it all the way back down to your forehead touches. We're gonna do that once more. Inhale, prepare, exhale, start to lift up. Inhale, full expression, press the tops of your feet. Exhale, wave it all the way back down. Bring, bring your hands back in close to you. Make your way down, back to downward facing dog. When this is through hands and knees, we're tucking your toes, shoulder blades back, engage your core, press up, and then lift up. Breathe. On your inhale, inhale to your toes, come to the top of a plank pose, and we're gonna come to a forearm plank. So, you can have your forearms parallel to each other. If that's not working for your shoulders, then do take more of like this uh, triangular shape. If you've got the parallel, that's awesome. Spread, spread your fingertips wide. Stay right here, low belly in, lifting up through your inner thighs, hands looking, I mean your eyes looking towards your hands, and then start to walk your feet in, moving towards your dolphin pose. Keep pressing through your palms. I know it's so early, right? Why are we doing this? And then walk your hands back till you're in the forearm plank. And then once more, if you're feeling it, walk your hand, feet back in, coming to dolphin. And then step it all the way back out. 
to your forearm plank. Drop your knees to your mat. Hips to heels, child's pose, or another posture that feels restful. Settle in. Find your breath, find your center, your focus. And then you're going to lift up, slither all the way down to your belly. We're gonna take some um, shoulder stretches here. Reach your right arm out, perpendicular to you. So straight up, thumb in line with your eyebrow. Turn your head to the left, and then start to press your left hand until you're rolling over onto your right shoulder. You might find that you need to bend your left knee and place your foot into the mat behind your right leg. Try to release your right head down, your right side of your head. Exhale, come back down onto your belly. Left arm comes out, perpendicular, thumb in line with elbow, press the right hand. Make sure your head is faced to the right. So you're on the left side of your cheek. And then roll over that shoulder, maybe bending the right knee, using the right hand to help with resistance. Exhale, come back down onto your belly. Legs behind you, lift onto one hip, reach your leg out, and the other one, just finding a little bit more length here. Toes are untucked, they can be parallel, or you can bring your legs together to your ankle, inner ankles to reach toward each other. Reach your hands back behind you, palms up, reach your shoulders up and back, keep reaching your fingers back until your chest comes away from the mat, point your toes, your legs may come away. Take the pose out of your forehead, try to reach your fingertips to your heels as your heels lift up. And then exhale, release everything down to the mat, press back to child's pose or another posture that you find to be restful. You'll be here for five breaths. We'll meet in downward facing dog. Your first of five breaths begins now. About now you might be coming upon that fifth breath. So begin your transition to your downward facing dog. Deep inhale, deep exhale. Next breath in, right leg lifts up toward the ceiling, lift up to your left toe. So you've got a little bit more space and on that exhale, place your foot between your hands towards your right thumb. Set up your lower body in warrior two, so angle your left foot down, drop your right thigh. Press through both feet and then on an exhale, unravel, warrior two. Shrug your shoulders down. Reach your fingertips in opposite directions. Press to the outer edge of your left foot. And then pull your ribs in, knitting everything towards your midline. So we're going to take gomukhasana arms here. So <laughs> flip your right palm up. So instead of taking an exalted warrior, you're going to lift up your right hand and then drop it behind you to your palm, pat your back. Left hand, turn your thumb down and then swing it around, grasp your shirt or take your fingertips together. Right now, I'm not gonna be grasping fingertips. It doesn't quite feel right today. Continue to have your lower body in warrior two. Start to square your shoulders toward the long side of your mat, even with arms in Gomakasana. Here, take an exalted warrior. As you start to arc back, your right elbow pointing up toward the ceiling, left elbow generally pointing down. And then come back to your regular warrior two with Gomukhasana arms. This is gonna be a little bit fun from here. We're going to move into an Ardha Chandrasana, option to keep the Gomukhasana arms. So if you keep it right here, or you can unravel, lean forward. It's a little bit different when you don't have your arms in full extension. Pop up onto your left toes, maybe take a couple hops. Your left leg will lift up. Keep left shoulder over right. Can you still extend to the crown of your head? Nice, Joe. You got it. Yes. <laughs> and then step all the way back, warrior two. Unravel your arms to warrior two, regular warrior two, that is. Swing your left arm towards the front of the room. Come into a high crescent lunge. Sit low. Spike up through your left heel. Lift up just a little bit out of your dip and then twist all the way to the right for an open arm twist. 
drop your right hand down to the mat or to your thigh rather, left, your left fingertips up toward the ceiling. Inhale, take both arms up toward the ceiling. Exhale, hands tap down. Step right foot back to meet left high plank. You can take a vinyasa if you'd like. We'll meet in downward facing dog. Just take a moment to check in. And then when you're ready, inhale, left leg lifts up and back. Lift up through your right toes, create a lot of space. Exhale, place your foot between your hands towards your left thumb. We're gonna set up warrior two in the lower part of the body. So angle the right foot down, drop your left thigh. Make sure that your knee is generally in line with the second toe. Pull your left hip underneath you best you can. And then on an exhale, unravel to warrior two. Go across into arms once again. So flip your left palm up, lift it up toward the ceiling, and then drop your hand to pat your back. Right hand, thumb drops down, and then swing your arm around, either grasping fingertips or taking your shirt. Make sure that your left knee is still placed directly over the ankle in the same line as your middle toe. Low belly in, and then take an exalted warrior here. Left elbow points up, right elbow generally pointing down. Keeping your arms as they are, start to bring it back up. Ardha Chandrasana, maybe with this bind. Shift forward, coming up onto the right toes really helps here. And then you're going to launch forward, maybe several steps, maybe just one, right leg will lift. Always an option to release your hands out of the bind. But if it's something you never tried, might as well, right? And then we're gonna take it back, keeping bind best you can, bend through the left knee. Send the right leg all the way back. And then fully unravel your arms, more traditional warrior two. Sweep your right arm towards the front of the room, pivot onto the ball of your back foot until you're a high crescent lunge, arms both lift. And then come out of this just a bit, exhale, twist to the left, open arm, thumbs up, drop your left hand to the right thigh, Lift your right fingertips up. And then take it back to the front. You're back to your high lunge. Exhale, hands tap down. Step your left foot back to meet your right. Vinyasa, if you would like to take it, we will meet back in downward facing dog. Take your knees to your mat, hips to your heels, or simply set on your knees to rest for the next five breaths. We will be meeting a downward facing dog to take that little bit of sequence again, and we're going to repeat through it. Your first of five breaths begins now. But now you might be finishing that fifth exhale. If you need a little more time, please take it. And we'll make our way back to downward facing dog. On an inhale, right leg lifts up toward the ceiling. On an exhale, place your foot between your hands toward right thumb. Set up your lower body in warrior two. Drop your hips on an exhale, unravel, warrior two. Gomukhasana arms, flip the right palm up. Lift it up and back, pat your back. Left thumb is down, swing it around. Your options, keep the thigh dropped. And then exalt from here, pointing right elbow up, left generally down, keep reaching out to the inner side of your right thigh. Keeping arms as they are, best you can, come back to warrior two. And then we move to an Ardha Chandrasana, lean forward, pop up onto the back toes, launch forward, left leg lifts, activity through those left toes. <laughs> and then bend to the knee, stand all the way back. Unravel your arms, regular warrior two, as you've known it. Swing your left arm towards the front of the room, tilt to your high crescent lunge. Continue all the way around until you're taking that open arm twist. Drop the hand behind you, left fingertips come up. Inhale, come back to the high lunge. Open up to warrior two once again. Go Mukasana arms with the right palm up. Start to make that spiraling motion. 
Sit low, exalted warrior, Gomukhasana arms, lift up. As you're ready, transition to your Ardha Chandrasana again. Can you find all the connected pieces here? And then when you're ready, stand all the way back. Warrior two, unravel your arms the same way you entered. Swing your left arm towards the front of the room. High lunge, continue the twist. Open arm twist, right hand drops down, left fingertips come up. Inhale, arms back up toward the ceiling. Exhale, hands tap down. This time, step your left foot forward, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, offer your heart. Exhale, fold. Press through your feet, come up all the way to standing, reach your arms out and up. And on an exhale, take your hands to your heart center. And then arms alongside your body in Tadasana, five breaths. And then when you're ready, we're going to move to a tree pose, Rikshasana. So shift your weight over to your left leg, lift your right knee up, open your knee to the side and place your foot into your thigh. Hands to your heart first. And the recommendation I'm, I am making for the, uh, the posture here is either a reverse prayer or taking cactus arms. So as you're ready, take an arm variation of your choice. If you're taking an open-hearted one, See if you can lift up through your chest and pull your ribs in. So you've got your heart opening up without the center of your body pulling out as well. Press your right foot into your left thigh. And if you've come to a place of a lot of balance, maybe send your gaze upward or close your eyes. Start to take your hands back to heart center if you took a different variation. And then begin to bring your right knee towards the front of the room. And then stand down. Let it go. The yoga five. And then come back to a Tadasana posture. Top of mat, mountain pose. Inhale, arms lift up, send your gaze up. Exhale, hinge at your hips, forward fold. Breath in, halfway lift, offer your heart. Exhale, fold, flow through vinyasa, or just step back to downward facing dog. On an inhale, left leg lifts up toward the ceiling, and on an exhale, place your foot between your hands towards your left thumb. Unless you're Rima, then you get to point it up to the sky. Step your right foot in, angle your foot down, get warrior two in your body, in your lower body, and as you're ready, exhale, wander up to your warrior two pose. Go Mukhasana arms, start with your left hand, cycle it up and back and then swing your right arm back as well. Exalted warrior with Go Mukhasana. Pull your floating ribs in, making sure you're not taking too much of a back bend, it's more of a side one. And then take it back, keeping your arms best you can. Ardha Chandrasana, shift your weight forward, right leg will lift. Stacking right shoulder over left, even with the spine active through your right leg. Then bend through your left knee, reach your right foot all the way back. For the warrior two, unravel your arms. Sweep your arm toward the front of the room, pivot onto the ball of your back foot, high crescent lunge. Keep that going as you twist to the left, open arms. Drop the left hand down, lift up your right fingertips. Very nice. Swing your arms back to the front of the room for your high lunge. Exhale, warrior two. Go Mukhasana arms, start with the left hand, coming up and back first and then incorporate the right arm. Exalt, left elbow up, keep reaching down through your left inner thigh, and then come right back up. Ardha Chandrasana, shift it forward with the bind or without. Right leg will lift. And then bend through the left knee, stand all the way back, unravel your arms for a traditional warrior two. So if your right arm toward the front of the room, high crescent lunge, continue the twist, open arm twist. Left hand drops, reach up your right fingertips. And then come back, arms lift up, high lunge. Exhale, frame the front foot with your hands. 
Step your right foot forward, forward fold. Breath in, halfway lift, offer your heart. Exhale, fold to honor yourself. Root to rise. Lift up, center chin up. Exhale, hands to your heart center. And you can keep them here or arms alongside your body. Five breaths. And then let's take a rickshasana tree pose on the side. So this time you're gonna shift the weight to your right leg, pull your left foot in to your location that you've chosen. Use your hand if you would like. Tailbone down so that you can engage your core a little more firmly, find some stability here. And when you'd like to take, if you'd like to take an arm variation, recommendations are reverse prayer or cactus arms. Anything that speaks to you is the right thing to do. And again, see if you can lift up through your heart space while pulling your low ribs down. And once you've found a place of stability, shake it up, take yourself to your edge, maybe center your gaze up, or start to close your eyelids. Could even come up onto your toes if you would like. If you've taken one of those gazes, start to bring it back down. If you've taken an arm variation, take your hands back to your heart center. Bring your left knee towards the front of the room. Stand down. Check it out. And then come back to your Tadasana or Samasiti with your hands towards your heart center. On an inhale. Arms lift up, chin is up. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, fold. Step back to top of plank pose. Option to flow through vinyasa or step back to downward facing dog. Give yourself at least three full rounds of breath in your downward facing dog. And at the end of that third exhale, simply come on to sit on your knees. Okay. The next pose we're going to play with is Udhirasana pose. This is hero pose. So if you'd like to use a block, you can grab one, have one nearby. Setting up for this pose, you're going to start by standing on your knees. And then instead of having your heels directly behind your knees, you're going to kind of flare them out a bit. So you've got this heels outside of hips, and that is because you might want to block for this. Um, either probably the bottom or second height. The top height is a little bit weird because it's smaller than your bum. And then you're going to start to send your hips back, hinging, and you're looking to sit your hips, your bum, between your heels. Again, if it's not working for you, it might not. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Our bodies change. Again, just set a block underneath your bum. And if the second height isn't quite enough for you and that top height is precarious, you could always set like a blanket, something, something to lift you up a bit. If you have come all the way down, and also a little bit of help here is if you smash out your calves. And if you want to take this a little bit further, it is an intense stretch. And depending on how your knees are, this might feel okay, it might not. So pay attention to that, let that guide you. If knees feel good, if this feels fine, start to lean back, hands behind you. And as you start to lower down, you'll get to a place where you can press through the tops of your feet in your hands, lift up your hips, scooch your bum under to more of your flesh of your bum is on the mat. Probably a deeper stretch here and then start to lower down. You might come all the way to your forearms. Again, notice if your back is craning up, this might be where you want to stay. You're still drawing your core in. Press through the tops of your feet. This will help you. And then maybe take your hands to your feet. Come all the way down onto your back. And if you've taken this full expression, you could take your arms overhead and grasp elbows. If you are sitting on a block, you can still find full um, experience of this posture. You're still pressing through the tops of your feet. You're still finding Tadasana. So draw your core in. If 
if you're all the way in the back, you're making as though you could pull your low back all the way to the mat. So keeping active here, continue to press the tops of your feet. All right, and then let's begin to unwind this posture. Those of you on your back, unravel your hands, take your hands to your heels, press up to your elbows and your forearms, lift up, we all come till our shoulders are over our hips, and that's all. Press hands into the mat to lift up, shift forward, set the block aside if you've got it, realign your heels in line with your hips, and just uh, smack it out a bit. Move your ankles in all directions. Such intensity. And then you're gonna find your way all the way onto your belly. So we're gonna take an ekapada bikinasana. <laughs> so come up onto your forearms. You're gonna place your left elbow below your left shoulder, right hand, I'm sorry, left hand on front of you, fingertips spread wide. Again, rock a little bit from side to side. Get like the flesh of your thighs kind of unstuck. Kick your right heel up. You're gonna lean onto your left arm to reach your right arm up and back. Okay, and then you're gonna start to bring your foot in close to your bum. So you're bringing your heel kind of like to the right side of your hip. Draw it in, elbow points up. This might be exactly where you are. If you wanna take it a little bit further, flip your grip so that the fingertips of your hand are pressing into the sole of your foot and continue to draw in. Left shoulder is back, right elbow continues to point up. So it's kind of like you've got this sphinx situation in, uh, the front of your body here, through your chest, your hand. Okay, we're ever with the right foot. Release, if you took the grip, undo the grip, take your hand down, wiggle your hips from side to side. Ooh. And then, same but different other side. Right elbow below your right shoulder, shift over to the left just a bit, left heel comes up. Swing your left arm up and back, give yourself lots of space, grasp the foot. Start to draw your heel towards your left side of your hip, okay? And then if you're like, this is going great. I wanna try something else. Send your elbow up toward the ceiling so you can start to spin your fingertips so your fingers are kind of cramped around your big toes. And then you're pulling everything forward, drawing your heel towards your hip. Keep pressing through your right hand and your right forearm. And then release it, unwind the same way you came in. Both hands are to the mat. Move your hips from side to side. And then press up to a child's pose. So toes together. You might choose to have your knees a little bit closer together for this one. As we take this counter pose and just allow yourself to slow forward. All right, slither all the way onto your belly, coming out of your child's pose, and then flip onto your back. Pull your right knee into your chest. We're gonna take a supine twist, draw your knee across your body. Adjust the units and your gaze up to the right. And next I'll take head and chin, <laughs> head and knee to the ceiling, extend your right leg out, pull your left knee in, and then twist in the opposite direction. Take your head and knee back up. Extend your left leg. So you've got both legs out in front of you. Flip back onto your belly. Make your way up to downward facing dog. You can press the hands and knees or through chaturanga. Stay here in your downward facing dog for three breaths. Bend your knees, look towards the top of your mat, and on an exhale, step or hop to the top. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold, Uttanasana. Come all the way up to standing, press down with your feet so you can lift up. Exhale, hands to heart center. And now we're ready to take a dancer pose. <laughs> We've taken so many of these shapes, and we're just gonna put them all together. The balancing, the one leg, all the stuff, the quad stretching, everything. Okay, so shift the weight to your left leg. Kick your right heel up so the bum is your heel is reaching towards your bum. Right hand out like you've got a serving platter. Left arm up toward the ceiling. 
face your palm away. So it's like you're giving somebody a high five. Reach, just extend your right elbow. So your thumb is facing away from you. Take your palm to the inside of your foot. Press your foot into your hand, hand into foot. Keep lifting up through your left fingertips, okay? So you're lifting up, pulling your knee to your midline. Press heel, foot into hand, hand into foot. Press down through your left foot. Again, openness through your upper chest. Reach your heart forward. Press down through your left foot. Keep reaching your left fingertips up toward the ceiling. And then if you'd like to take a tip forward, you can do that. Or you continue to have this upright, ready to go, fully prepared version. Just breathe. Take the pose out of your forehead, out of your jaw. And then when you're ready, start to release down. Fine hook, stand down. Fun. All right, and then we're gonna take the other side. Shift the weight onto the right foot. Find your stability. Left heel pops up. Left arm out like you're holding a platter. Right hand up, high five. Extend your left elbow. Your hand is, your palm is facing away from you. Take the inside of your hand to the inside of your foot. Foot to hand, hand to foot. Kick it up, pull your leg. Lift up to your right fingertips. Reach your chest up as you intensify and create this back bend while you're standing on one foot. It's pretty amazing. What a spectacular body you live in. Breathe, 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 shoulders away from ears. If you'd like to take that forward tip, you can do that or continue upright. And then as you're ready, start to unravel and unwind. Same way you came in. Stand down, shake it out. Come back to Samastiti or Tadasana at the top of your mat. Five breaths. Notice the quality of your breath and your thoughts. And then with your eyes open or closed, inhale, arms lift up, chin is up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Come all the way back up again. Reverse swan dive. And bring your hands to your heart center. We're going to take dancer pose once again. You've been here before. Second option. Second chance. Second experience. Will not be the same as the first. You can never step in the same river twice. So shift your right, uh, to the right leg. If you know you're going, go ahead and move as you're ready. Left heel comes up. Left arm down. Hand away, inside of hand to inside of foot, right fingertips up toward the ceiling, hand to foot, foot to hand, find that resistance, draw your left knee in, lift up through your right kneecap, press down through your foot, engage everything. And as you're ready, start to unravel. Take just one moment before you shift sides. Inside of right hand to inside of right foot, left fingertips up, palm is away. Press the foot, hand to foot, foot to hand. Really press down through the left foot, lift up through your heart. Right knee draws in toward your midline. This will help you push down and up. And then when you're ready, unravel, reverse path. Find your samasiti or tadasana at the top of your mat. Press down through your feet. Lift up through your kneecaps. Strong through your core. Lift up through your heart, floating ribs in. Shoulders down. Lifting up to the crown of your head. Soft jaw, soft to the back of your neck. And then with your eyes opened or closed, your own time, your own breath, make your way back to downward facing dog. Move whenever you are ready.
from your downward facing dog, bend your knees, look towards your hands, and then hop to a seat in the middle of your mat. Extend your legs out in front of you. Start to move the flesh away from, bring your thighs out to the side. Flex your toes towards your face, bent knees are fine. Inhale, lift your arms up, and on an exhale, hinge forward, let your hands drop wherever they do. Again, inhale, halfway lift, heart is forward. Exhale, come more fully into this posture. Again, flexing your toes, backs of, uh, you feel this through the backs of your legs, most likely. You do not need to straighten your knees. Inhale, lift up, come up halfway. Exhale, completely release. Bend your right knee, place your foot into the mat, either to the inside of the right knee or to the outside. If your right hip draws up when you cross your knee, don't worry about it, and then just place your foot to the inside. Right hand behind you, fingertips away, lean back. Inhale, left arm is up, twist to your belly, then at your chest. Elbow to the outside of the thigh or wrap your arm around your knee. Make sure that you've got equal weight between both of your hips. Flex your left toes towards your face and begin this twist, Ardha Matsya Andrasana. On an exhale, take your head back to the front of the room, front of your mat, unravel. Take a counter twist over to the other side. Lean up far, drop your head. And press your way back up. Extend your right leg. Bend your left knee, place your foot into the mat, either to the inside or the outside. Left hand behind you, fingertips away, lean back. Inhale, right arm lifts up, twist at your belly, twist a little bit further, wrapping around knee or elbow to the outside of your thigh. Active fingertips through your right hand, active toes through your right foot. Continue to twist. And then send your gaze back to the front of the room. Unravel, counter twist. Bow down, drop your head. And then press your way back up. Uncross, place your feet down, bend both knees. Get your block if it's nearby. And you're gonna roll all the way down onto your back. So we are going to take a supported bridge pose. If you'd rather take a more traditional bridge or a bridge flow, it works for you, um, but given that we've done so many active back bends here, um, so much balancing, uh, it seems nice to have some support. And remember that we've always got support nearby. So my recommendation is the first or second height. The top one is a little bit wobbly. So press your feet into the mat to lift up your hips. Take the block at the height that you would like, and you're going to place it underneath your sacrum. So kind of right above your bum. So your bum's kind of hanging off. It's this flat-ish bone toward the base of your spine, so like above your bum, and then just rest down. You can have your arms alongside your body, one hand on heart, one hand on belly, both on belly. This choice is yours. The next posture will be a supported shoulder stand. So if you have the block underneath your sacrum, you will simply bring your knees up above your hips and then extend your feet up toward the ceiling. If you do not have a block, you can do the same thing simply without the block. So your whole back is on the mat. You bend your knees in so your knees are over your hips and you extend your feet upward. If you've got a wall nearby, you might even consider to do legs up wall as an alternate.
again to find journeys. Who knows how long it takes your feet to eventually touch down onto the mat. If your legs up, well, carefully remove yourself from that pose. For those of you that were in a supported shoulder stand, you're now back to a supported bridge top. Just press your feet, lift up your hips, slide to walk away, and wave your spine down onto the mat. Take your feet a little bit wider and then knock both knees over to the right. Point your knees straight back up again and knock both knees over to the left. Bring your knees back up to the ceiling once again. Right knee pulls in, left knee extends out. We're gonna take the same supine twist we took not too long ago. Draw your knee across your body, adjust your shoulders as you move. Send your head over, your guys over to the right if it's comfortable on your neck. On and exhale, head and knee back to center. Extend the right leg out, pull your left knee in. And then take your twist in the opposite direction. On and exhale, take your head and knee back up to center. Bring on your hips, pull both knees into your chest. Take your hands to your shins or the backs of your arms. Pull your forehead up towards your knees. Squeeze into a little ball and actually squeeze your toes. Squeeze your fingertips. Squeeze your eyes. Squeeze your mouth. Don't squeeze your jaw. And then on an exhale, completely release everything as you come into your final posture of this class, which is Shavasana. Take all the time you need to enter the pose. And then once you have found the position where you can find the stillness, you're gonna to begin to release. Feeling the soles of your feet become softer, your ankles releasing. Calves soft and your kneecaps have dropped and your thighs have released and your hips are heavy, your belly is soft. Your heart is radiating, supported by everything behind it, allowing everything else to be soft, your forearms, your elbows, your upper arms, the backs of your hands, palms of your hands, your neck your jaw, your tongue, your cheeks, your eyes, and your forehead.
Drift your thoughts back to your energetic portion and taking a deeper breath and then release that. Start to invite some movement into your fingertips and your toes, into your wrists and your ankles. And then when you're ready, you'll roll over onto your right side, pull your knees in closer toward you in this moment of transition. And then take as much time as you'd like. You'll move your way eventually with your eyes closed into a seated posture for a brief reflection and meditation. Bring your palms together, thumbs into your heart center, breathe into your heart. And exhale, what is there? On your next breath, then reach your arms out and up, palms to touch above you. And on an exhale, take your thumbs to the space between your eyebrows for clarity of thought, to your lips for clarity of speech, and to your heart for clarity of action. Bow your head to your heart. May we all go into the world to do good in the name of the highest good. Namaste.